All right, everyone, I am back with a quick survival tip video. And uh, in this video, I wanted to go over basically what is the most versatile piece of equipment that you can carry for almost no weight, for almost no investment that could potentially save your life and also is very widely available basically anywhere. You could find them at gas stations, you could find them at uh, supermarkets, you could find them. Almost every store offers this piece of equipment that is incredibly vital and is incredibly versatile to any camper, any backpacker, any survival specialist. So are you ready? Prepare yourself, drum roll. A simple cotton bandana. So I know it seems a little ridiculous, but I'll just go over a few uses that I personally have used for this, but also a few more that I know can be used and have been used to not only aid in somebody's uh, survival, but also their well-being and potentially, you know, could have saved lives. So first off, obviously you can use it just to wipe your face. If I'm backpacking or something like that, most backpacks have the little pouches right here. Um, and one of them I'll typically carry a knife, a compass, uh, maybe a lighter. And I typically carry my map and my top pack, uh, my top pouch. I carry a bandana in the other one because it's nice to just wipe off your face, get some of that sweat out of your eyes, especially on a hot summer day when it's stinging. Um, you know, go with my personal choice is to go with the biggest bandana that you can get. I think this one's a standard, you know, maybe uh, 18 inches by 18 inches. So it's it's a fairly standard size. It's nothing super special. Um, and this, I think I got at a dollar store. I've had this particular bandana since I was maybe, you know, six or seven years old and it's worn perfectly fine. Um, some are obviously cheaper and don't, don't last as long, but I mean, at a dollar store, I've, I've had this for, I'm 28 now, I've had this for 22 years. So, obviously you can use this to wipe your face. If you don't have a hat on, you can use it as, uh, basically you can use it like most kids tie bandanas, put it over the top of your head, and oop, there we go, tie it in the back. And you could do it like this and have that go over the top to kind of protect your the top of your head in a high heat situation. If it's cold out, you could actually, um, and you can wring this up and pour water on it in a high heat situation. And most people make the mistake where they would put it around their head, but I would actually encourage you to put it around your neck and cool off the carotid arteries that are around your neck. Mind you, if you are in an area where you cannot get shade, then actually putting it on top of your head might be a better option because it's not only cooling the veins and the, um, that are going around the capillaries that are going around the top of your skull, but they're also protecting you from sunlight. Then uh, if it is super cold out and you don't have anything to protect your nose and face, um, or if you're walking into a supermarket nowadays with COVID being a thing, uh, you could just tie it around your face and protect your face from getting real cold. Um, also, if you if it's not so cold that it's bothering your your mouth and your nose, but it's bothering your ears, you could wrap it around low on your head and just get some protection for your ears there, um, just to get that little nip out and keep them from uh, really getting you know frostbite or too cold where it's becoming uncomfortable if you don't have a hat. Now, another thing that you can use a bandana for, um, and if you have a hat, is I know it's going to seem a little bit goofy, but if it's in a high heat situation, oh, I flipped it over on itself. If it's in a high heat situation, put it on top of your head like this, and then put the hat on over it. That will protect your neck, give you a little bit of shade on the sides, especially if you have a little bit of water. Um, to put on that to actually shade yourself then that actually can help you stay out of being uh, heat exhausted or going into heat stroke. I know some of these may look goofy, but hey, if it's, you know, between life and death or between you potentially hurting yourself, getting heat exhaustion, heat stroke, hypothermia, hyperthermia, any of that stuff, then a simple cotton bandana can actually help with that. Now, mind you, in a winter situation, this is cotton, so it's going to hold water. 
Um, so if you start sweating into it, then it's better to sweat into this and then take it off while it starts to get colder at night. Um, this is super thin, so you could dry it by the fire, um, but you don't wanna be wearing this if it's wet in a winter, basically a winter situation, because this is going to freeze first and it's going to sap you of energy and warmth very quickly. Now, um, another thing that I found that's nice about this, as I had uh, alluded to earlier, um, if it's a hot weather situation, you can put this around your neck to protect from carotid artery or to uh, cool down your carotid arteries. Also, if you are in a cold weather situation and you don't have a scarf to put around your neck, if this is dry, you can put a jacket on over this and that'll actually help keep some of the warmth in around your neck. Um, if you you know, don't have a scarf. I typically don't wear a scarf out in the winter time, but having this with me, if my neck starts getting cold, then that'll help keep a lot of that warmth in. And basically the, the rule the rule is in heat, what you could do to keep yourself cold is best. In cold, what you can do to keep yourself warm is best. So adding a little simple piece of equipment like this, um, that'll help keep yourself cold or keep yourself warm, then that is going to obviously better your chances of being more comfortable and possibly surviving. Now, if you are cut, or even if you are bit by a snake, a venomous snake, a venomous spider in particular, um, if you need to, if you don't have a tourniquet with you and you need to make a fashion a tourniquet, then you can actually wrap your, uh, a bandana around yourself put a stick through it and start twisting it to create a tourniquet in an extreme emergency first aid situation. Um, also, if you're bit by a snake or if you're bit by a spider, you could tie off the area. You won't use it as a tourniquet because you don't want to cut blood flow off the area, but you can constrict blood flow um, and reduce it to keep that venom from spreading to the rest of your body. Um, and that could actually potentially save your life. Now, another thing is, and I've actually used this quite a few times, uh, if I am getting water from a stream and I'm filling up, let's say this is my dirty bottle or I have a, a bottle or a cup or something that I'm using in particular as my dirty uh, water uh, holder, then what I'll do actually is cover the top of it as almost a pre-filter to keep a lot of that bigger sediment and stuff like that out of there. Um, if you ever watch uh, Dual Survival or Survivor Man or any of that, and, and they come out and their water looks like chocolate milk, having a bandana over that would actually help prevent some of that water from and some of that sediment from getting in there. Um, so those are just a few uses. And, and obviously, you know, the normal use for bandanas to blow your nose. I just French hanky it on the ground because I'm out in the woods. I can care less. Um, but if you're cut slightly, this is cotton, so it's going to help uh, coagulate some of that blood, um, which a lot of people always make mistakes with paper towels or with toilet paper. Oh, you know, they think it's something I have that'll actually help stop the bleeding better. Actually, no, a cotton bandana would. So if you have a decent cut or a decent slice, you know, let's say I cut my finger, get the bandana on there, it's gonna help coagulate that blood. And it'll actually help stop the bleeding a lot better than a paper towel or a, uh, a piece of toilet paper or something like that. So extremely, extremely versatile piece of equipment. You're always gonna have it on you. When I go hiking, I almost, you know, I, I was in the scouts, so I, uh, I'm the nerd that just neckerchiefs it and just ties it around my neck. I'll typically roll it up, especially if I'm doing a strenuous hike up a mountain or something like that, and I just tie it right there. Um, another thing that you could use is a buff, but a buff is a little bit more stretchy. It's a little less versatile. It's a little more uh, see-through. So that little trick I just showed you with the water, it'll be less effective with um, filtering some of the water out. And also it's not completely cotton, so it doesn't hold water as well. It won't stop bleeding as well. So I typically just stick with a standard old cotton bandana. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, definitely hit the subscribe button for more tricks and tips like this. I have a bunch of them coming out. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Hit the like button and I will see you guys next time.